Hello everyone, in this section, we continue to learn the operation of the service. In this section, we learn the deletion of data. First, we switch to the back end. Similarly, we add an object container and an object container. The name of the reform is called data deletion. Then we add a service in the data container. We double click to rename it to a data container delete. Then let's define this function. Since we need to delete a piece of data, we need a retrieval condition, that is, which piece of data we want to delete. Through the previous courses, we have learned that, ah, for a database like ours, its data ID is unique, so we usually use the data ID as a retrieval condition for both data update and targeted deletion. So here, ah, we select our data deletion and add a name to our receiving parameter, that is, our data ID. Similarly, in the return parameters, we also write down one of its return parameters, a result called deletion, and a failure reason. Then we can start to define such a method of data deletion. Then I'll show you two deletion methods here. The second method is recommended for these two methods, and the first one is a more general one. Here is also a simple demonstration for you. Since it is data deletion, the first object we operate on must be our database. So here we select the database and let it perform an action. Here is an action called data deletion. We can see that after we choose to delete data, there is a filter condition here. You can use this condition to filter data to delete. For example, if I want to delete the data older than 12, I can select a time period older than a certain age here, which can delete a batch of data. But here, because our scenario is to delete only one data, we change it to a data ID, which is equal to the data ID we received from the frontend A parameter, and then the maximum number of deleted items. Since the data ID is unique, we change it to one here, and then we add a callback. Then, when it is completed, we ask the current service to set its return result, and then here is the success of a return result, and a failure reason of the return result we will do a good job in data deletion. Generally speaking, if we do a good job in a service, we will simply perform a debugging, so here we will try whether such a debugging can successfully delete. If we select such a database, we can see that the current data ID 12347 has all these IDs. Then we will delete the data with the unique data ID, we will switch to our data deletion service. We will write a 1 in the debugging here. Then when we click a debugging, we can see it whether the deletion result fails because DB is not allowed to delete data. In other words, we don't allow it to delete data. Why did we tell you when we just learned the database property lesson that it was because ah, we have opened such a security protection for you by default. Since there is security protection, there is only one data that can be deleted and all records can't be deleted a deletion. So ah, if I want to delete the database directly, I must close such a security protection. Here, we will close such a security protection, and then we will call such a data deletion service again. You can see that ah, he told us that the deletion result is equal to yes. Let's cut it when we look at the data database, we can see that ah, the data with data ID equals 1 has been deleted by us, so we have completed a real method of data deletion. However, ah, in our actual production process, we rarely use such a real data for deletion. Why? because the real deletion of data is a very important thing. If you are called as a deletion API, it can be hijacked maliciously and then delete all the data in your backend. Therefore, we do not recommend that you close this security protection. So since we want to delete a data, we cannot delete the data really, how can we do it? So here I recommend a more common and very standard way for you, that is, we only modify a state of the data backend, rather than a real deletion of the data. Since we want to modify a state, we can add a field here. You can write a type of field here at will, and then it is called a state. Then we click OK. You can define the state here. For example, when the data is equal to 1, it means that such a state exists. If I change its status from 1 to 0, such a piece of data is equivalent to being deleted by me. What is our deletion? It is equivalent to updating data in a disguised form. So here we will do another standard data deletion, that is, we modify the data status. Here we change it to our data deletion, and then here we call it an update method, 
which means that we delete data through the update method. Similarly, we also input a receiving parameter here. Since we also update data, we actually delete it with the data ID as a receiving parameter. Similarly, its return parameters can also be added here, such as a deletion result and a failure reason. Therefore, a callback here is exactly the same as our method of using updates. We can also review it here. When it is completed, we first judge whether it has been successful, so here is whether the update result is successful. If it is equal to no, what does it mean? Did you fail to delete it? Therefore, we will return through our current service, and its deletion result is equal to no. The reason for deletion is that our server is abnormal. Similarly, if it has been updated successfully, it means that in other cases, although it has been updated successfully, what does it mean that the number of updates in an update result is equal to zero? This indicates that it has indeed performed such an update operation, but there is no real data, so here we will return the result in another way. It is still no, but one of the reasons for its failure is that there is no corresponding data. Similarly, then there is the last case, that is, it is updated successfully, and then the number of updates is not equal to zero. In this case, it proves that it is indeed updated successfully, that is, we really change a state of the data from 1 to 0, and from 1 to 0. For us, the result is that we really complete 1 after deleting 1 data, we can conduct a simple debugging. We can see that all the current states are equal to 1 pair, right? Then we delete such a piece of data with data ID equals 2. So let's change the data ID to a 2 here, and then click a debug. You can see that it tells us that the deletion result is tantamount to making. Let's take a look at a piece of data with data ID equals 2 here. It dynamically becomes a zero, but here, we should pay attention to one thing, that is, for a database like ours, although we only change its state from 1 to 0, for our actual operation, I actually delete such a set of states. So when I do an output, I don't want this data. What should I do? Therefore, when we perform a data output, we need to add a condition here for an update. Therefore, we need to add a condition here, and its state should be equal to 1. Similarly, we also need to add such a condition here, and its state should be equal to 1. Therefore, no matter whether we output or perform statistics, we only count that the status is equal to 1, that is, our default status is still available for output. This is equivalent to dynamically defining whether such a data really exists or does not exist to us through a state variable. Of course, we also need to modify the submission here. We also need to add a value here after submission, and its status value is equal to 1. Similarly, for the user-defined data submitted here, we should dynamically add such data to a value equal to 1. If we do not add data in front-end, we must add data in back-end. The status of submitting data here is equal to 1, which is very easy to add, while submitting self-defined data here. Because this is a settlement at present, we use a settlement variable to transfer it here. Similarly, we add an object variable below this, which is called a transit variable. Then, similarly, when he gets the data, we first assign a value to our transfer. What is the content of the assignment? It is our submitted data. Then, after he completes the assignment, we have to attach it, that is, our state is only equal to 1, and then we choose our transfer. Why you can add fields to it? What is a column of its field? We can take a look at the name of a database here, which is called a state. So here, ah, uh, we also add such a value called our state, and then the default value of the state is equal to 1. Then the data on this side is equivalent to the data that is built for us. After the data is built, we will submit such a transit value to our backend, so as to complete one operation of submitting our entire data. Therefore, please note that when we are actually making a piece of data, usually we will add a variable of such a state. We will dynamically judge whether such a piece of data really exists or not, because we will not delete the data truly. Whether the data here is deleted, take down or draft, in fact, we will use a state value for a dynamic control. Then we will modify the backend service. Let's also modify a UI in frontend. In fact, the frontend plan is very simple. Here is a button for editing. Let's copy and paste it. 
change it to a button for deleting. Here is a button for deleting, and then change its color to a red one. Then, when such a delete button is clicked, how can we do it? Here, let's redefine it, add an event for it, and if what is done when it is clicked, can we trigger a delete method like ours? Here, we directly use a delete data ID method. Is the deleted data ID equal to the value of a data ID of the current data? Then here we make a judgment through a result. If a deleted result of the returned result is equal to the description, explain whether it has actually completed such a deletion. At this time, we can all have a data source, that is, we can perform an operation to delete a line with such an enrollment information, and its line number is equal to its current serial number. Here, we still pass a check. We delete a value such as weight 12. We can see that it tells us that it has been deleted successfully. Then we go to our database and take a look. The value status of weight 12 is changed to 0. Let's refresh one of our pages. We can see that there is no such straight line here, indicating that this data has been deleted by us. Then we will go to verify whether the input feature we have just modified is normal. Let's write it casually here. Then we are 12 years old and introduce ourselves. We can comb it casually and then click Submit. Here is a method of data entry above. Let's check the database. You can also see that the 412 datas are equal to 1. You can see that the data just entered is displayed here. Then we can enter another method. Here, write another one. Then here, we submit our own data. He also told us that the submission was successful. Let's take a look at the data we just wrote. The 45-year-old data also submitted it come in, so let's remind you that whether we update the status or delete a piece of data, we rarely use real deletion, which is our method of data deletion. We often update the data by changing its status code. Of course, because we have dynamically updated such a state here, we must pay attention to it when outputting, that is, we should add such a state, code and condition when outputting. Otherwise, if you don't add the state here, you feel that you output, and finally he will add all your states if we output all of them, this is not an effect we want. Similarly, when we submit data, we also need to make such a status code equal to 1 by default, that is, we define such a default existing status, and submit it to the database, which is equivalent to our standard data deletion method and then through our service definition, we will delete it dynamically modify the value of such a state in the back end, and then go to our front end to call such a deletion service. If he successfully completes the deletion, the data in our front end end is deleted by us. The line number is equal to the current serial number. In this way, the data in front end is deleted dynamically. That's all the content of this section. Thank you for watching.